Hello everyone, this is Dan with Arcade Funcade. Today we're going to go over this uh, this pinball. It's a Williams pinball called Spanish Eyes. And we're going to be going over a couple parts and just a very common problem that we're finding with these uh, with these machines that are easy fixes that most people could just do at home if you have a soldering iron or just even a pair of alligator clips and wires. Um, but yeah, one of the things that we've been finding is that when we would press the start button, the, the start button do down below, even though you had credits up here, you have five showing that we have five credits. We have uh, we have no start, we or we have a false start, and what ends up happening is that sometimes we have a bad contact in the start button itself. So sometimes a start button. So with these Williams machines, some of these guys show flipper button, and we have to change that bulb out. It's actually dead, but you press this button, and what it does is that it's supposed to light up the machine, which is great. That button wasn't working, so we repaired that guy. What happened with that guy is that it needed a ground. So we're going to show you that in a little bit. We're going to raise this uh, play field up. And we'll show you guys a little bit of what we did. So one of the things that we like doing with these Williams uh, pinballs, uh, this guy's a 1972, and they have a ton of relays inside. And what we wanted to do is highlight these little these little uh, tabs here, and you can see some of them are really really dirty. So what we go, what we do is we go through every one of those guys, every one of those contacts, and clean the crap out of them. And what we end up doing is we make sure that all the all the wires and traces are all soldered together. That there isn't any um, loose loose points. And the first thing we really check is the, is the fuses, uh, but we also want to just make sure that what. And we want to check out the main cause of the pop, the fuse pop, fuse problem. And one of the issues that we've been finding is that um, there's there's wires that are uh, unsoldered, or there's ground wire here. We found this guy that was uh, completely completely loose, and we noticed that some of this some of these guys are painted inside and out. So sometimes uh, paint paint jobs and that get stuck in, in between these tungsten com components don't touch they don't touch like they're supposed to so what happens is that these these little connections in here get really 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 dirty so you can see in there that a little bit of paint fell inside there so this thing's been sitting here for a while or sitting yes been sitting here for a long long time I guess uh, from what the owner was telling us so what we did is we kind of bypassed uh, some wiring here and we didn't bypass it but we renewed the wire it's got a, a, a break in the wire so we just decided to take it off and connect it directly to the back of the coin door. Now, one of the issues that these coin doors have is that they have this um, this weird little mechanism that isn't isn't what we normally like to see in machines. I mean, they come with them, but it's one of those deals. If you press this these connections, I gotta move back a little bit here. Um, if you press this guy, it'll start again. It'll simulate a coin drop, which is kind of cool. But it's also directly wired to the start button. Um, we don't know why it was like that until we started messing around with it. This guy is also wired to give us a coin drop. So coin drop is okay. And this is the only thing that we were worried about and that we had uh, no start. So what we did is we, we re-soldered these wires. And we centered them up to uh, connect it to this button here. So the, the connection on this button wasn't doing good. Uh, this guy here and this guy had to be bent forward a little bit so we can make a contact when we press the button so that was one of the issues that's usually what happens with these guys you just never know um, but we have we have we have coinage what we're going to be putting doing is putting a uh, little coin slot in there it's missing it so it's going to be kind of neat we can also put these guys on free play um, there's, that's in a whole nother video, but yeah, it's one of those things we can, we can set these things up to free play. You got to do a little bit of modding in the back box, but uh, but it's all it's all good. Um, yeah, always check out. You always want to disconnect the machine before you start uh, checking out these wires. But yeah, you have your little transformer here, and uh, you got to watch for all the your um, to get your correct correct voltage. You have to get uh, you have to get a little just get a little uh, multimeter and check it out. Uh, make sure all the all your contacts are good. I have noticed that in some of these machines. They have you have some uh, rocking, so these, these little plastic flaps that go back and forth. Sometimes you have these these little copper flanges, the little uh, little connections. They actually come out and they get stuck in the plastic, 
holding this thing open. So you gotta make sure that every one of these little guys is in its correct slot. So most of these guys, you can, you can kind of feel around and see where they're at. But uh, you can just, just see them by touch. You can also test out the solenoids. Just in case you're wondering, there's so, so much stuff going on in these guys. There's a whole rail here full of uh, solenoids that kick around your rockers, your knockers. Check it out. You hit one button. And one of the biggest problems that we've also seen is that the uh, game over sign is on in the back, that back right corner where the number 10 is. It says tilt and game over down below. You see it right through that glass. And uh, what ends up happening is that you have your game over solenoid way in the back uh, get stuck. You have these little stickers that are super helpful that let you know what's going on back there. Game over relay, last trip. So it kind of helps out where to know which relay is doing what when you're working on stuff. So it's nice to have those little stickers. And uh, you see your little coin relays back there. So if you're not coining up, you know where to go. Um, eject relay. That's another another relay that gets stuck uh, pretty often because it, it's used at every single game. Every one of these are used in every game, but um, that, eject, that eject ball thing always gets stuck. It's usually a big problem. Ball index, also a big problem. Um, this, this guy right here is supposed to get powered up. As soon as the machine turns on, it's supposed to click over. If it doesn't click over, one of the main issues is that your coin door is having a problem. <laughs> and it's like the coin door having the problem that always messes things up. So it always comes back to the coin door and or your ground wire. So ground, grounding is extremely important. Uh, we see a lot of wires that are messed up and a lot of machines that are messed up. And it's usually just a solder point that just falls off. Um, these these machines, these old school Williams, they, you hardly ever have to change out any parts in these guys, which is nice. Um, there's a ton of ton of uh, solenoids down below and a ton of wiring, old school wiring. But when it works, it's beautiful. It works, it works, and it's nice. Uh, but yeah, you always got to go through a ton of uh, wiring and make sure nothing's touching. As you can see here, there's a ton of stuff here, a ton of connections and uh, a ton of contacts. Oh my gosh, to go through, and it's always extremely fun to go through all that but uh yeah i always want to check these guys out there's every once in a while people go through have a couple problems with uh solenoids not firing ball not ejecting and all that stuff we talked about that sometimes it's your lower fuse or at times it's the fuse that is right under your play field which is this guy here it's a 10 amp fuse and uh it's kind of they're kind of uh uh, crazy. You also have these little bridge rectifiers that mess up at times. Uh, you always want to check those out and there are videos on how to test those. Um, but yeah, there's there's a ton of contacts and just, just you always want to go through these guys. This guy's been sitting for a while here. At least it was out of the elements. I've seen, I've seen some of these machines in barns and just falling apart uh, and uh, they just need a, a little bit of cleanup here and there. But cavity looks like crap, but the mechanical parts are actually not bad. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we just wanted to go over this with you and kind of show you guys um, a little bit of what what is done, what is needed for this guy to work, how these guys work, and uh, all the, the the things that are going on underneath it. So if you guys have any questions, let us know. Hit us up here at arcadefunk.net um, or here on YouTube and check us out. And you can see um, how this is all supposed to work. If you guys have any questions, we can go over any machine um, any year with you guys and kind of give you guys some uh, some ideas if you have any machines that are messed up. But uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day and thanks again. Take care. Dan, this is Dan with Arcade Fun Kid.